Howdy folks, welcome back to Calfee House Forge. A little project I'm working on. A gentleman I work with was rummaging through an old toolbox and actually found a hatchet that had belonged to his father. Um, had a leather wrapped handle, which of course had completely disintegrated after laying in the bottom of the toolbox for many, many years here in the hot Florida environment. Now, I've already taken a little bit of the rust off of it. It was pretty bad shape. He doesn't want it pristine. He just wants to kind of bring it back and have it as the fact it did use to belong to his. He also had went down to a local flea market where he has some folks he knows and was able to pick up some leather scraps from a booth that actually sells um, belts. This is what they cut off of them whenever they measure it for you and sell them to them. So the idea is to take these scraps, I'll come to size that we need, and then turn around, epoxy them on, make a leather bound handle for this. It's the first time I've done this and I'm looking forward to doing it. Uh, I'll do a couple cuts. I'll probably speed the video up because who wants to watch me watch you watch me cut about 60 pieces of leather. And then I'll slow it back down when it comes time to get the epoxy in place. So stick around, I'll make this as short as possible, but it hopefully should be a little educational as well. First thing I'm going to have to do is grind off this end plate. Now I want to preserve it because it actually has some writing on it that I'm going to clean up as well as far as where it's made. So I'm just going to lightly grind these down to where I can pop this plate off and we'll reuse it. I'm just going to use the grinder to uh, buzz this off real fast and we'll go from there. I'm going to go with a wire brush, try to clean this up and see if I can get the name off of it of who actually made this hatchet. Alright folks, not really easy to read, but what I was able to pull out a little bit of it, and I don't think it's going to show up on camera, but it's an East Wing hatchet made in Rockford, MA, made in the USA. Don't have a date on it, but it looks like it's an East Wing hatchet. Uh, of course, we all know East Wing's been around a long time. They make great tools, great hammers. Um, so we're going to bring this thing back to life. So I'm finding out really this leather is not the best fit, but the fact it's free is a magic that makes it really handy. I'm not going to have a lot to work with. Obviously I've got to go this direction and it'll give me about a quarter inch on either side. So when I get ready to start grinding or rounding this off, I'm not going to have a lot of fudge room, so it's going to be very interesting. I'll mark these out. I'll start making all my cuts on all these different belt pieces, and then we'll go from there. Let's see. This end piece is two inches. So first thing we're going to have to do is clean up the end of this belt. So we have a nice straight piece to start off with. Good old leather. I'll set my gauge actually to two and a half. That'll give me a quarter inch on both sides to work with. So once I get through here, I'll score. I'll straight edge. I'll make my cut. Again. Now watch me do this. It's going to be watching paint dry. So what I'll do is I'll keep doing these. I'll get my stack of leather built up and then I'll come back.
That wasn't too bad. We're looking about maybe 15 minutes to do the cutoffs. There they all are. Now comes the next part. Digging around my father's stuff, who unfortunately is no longer with us, but he's taught me a lot. And if you ever watch my intro for Coffee House Forge, you know he's responsible for the man I am today. So, he has tools upon tools upon tools based on his previous life. So this gives me the opportunity to use one of his leather punches that just so works out to be the perfect size. So what I'm going to do is line these up, even them up. I'm going to double punch one on each side. Once I get them all done, I will take the razor knife from that punch and I'll split across. When that is done, then the ideal is they should go on here and each one slide on individually. I'll try one and we'll see if that works first. Slide it on. Yeah, they're going to be tight. Rust on here. Now, now, that's one down, 49 to go. I've actually ground one down. There's a lot of leather there. I got plenty of spacing. It should end up about the same size as the end plate. And when I'm done, I will just ball peen this end plate back around. All right. Finally got the epoxy in. Got everything ready to go. It's time let's go ahead and get this job done. Got the hatchet placed in the vise. Got all my leather pieces here ready to go. All we got to do now is mix up my epoxy, which finally came in. It is a 20 minute set epoxy, or excuse me, 20 minute work, 20 minute cure. Gives me all the time I need. And uh, so for this point on, let me mix it. Let's start stacking, gluing, and then I'll turn around, clamp it down, and let it cure. So, thanks for working with the new camera uh, software program on my uh, camera here. Uh, somehow or another, I actually did lose all of the video of me epoxying and um, stacking all these leather rings on this hatchet. Now the good news is, obviously, it is done. As you can see, there it is. 
probably didn't miss a whole lot because of the fact, I mean, come on, all I was doing was slapping epoxy on with my, with my rubber gloves and uh, sticking them on there. One thing I did have to do along the way because of the curvature and the shape of this thing, in my camera position right, was uh, every now and then I did take a hammer and I did have to uh, push them down in place a little bit in order to get them all bound together. So. You didn't miss a whole lot on that part of it, but just keep in mind when you're working on something like this that the one one of the issues I had to come up with was finding the proper set time for my leather epoxy. I did it with a 20 minute time, which was perfect. Uh, it took me maybe 15 minutes to stack, probably 10 minutes to stack 51 leather uh, pieces onto this hatchet and get it clamped up. Um, kind of a nice day out of here. We're just going to let this cool, uh, let this set. I've got a couple other projects i got to work on. Two new puppies. And I've got to build a kennel for them because they've already outgrown the one I've got them in. So I'll be back when the sets and we'll go to sanding and more sanding and more sanding. I'm really looking forward to this. Sorry I lost the other part of the video. Modern technology, hey, you got to love it or got to hate it. Today, kind of hate it. So, got her turned over, got her brought up, again I'd like to find the age of this, but the main thing is, it's getting brought back up, it'll be back into service, and it's part of a co-worker's childhood memories. Got her all set up, we're going to give it a shot, be some background noise going on here, so I apologize about that. Had to get the fan going just to help move the dust away. Should be wearing a dust mask probably. Let's see how much this creates. And I'm gonna have to go with my respirator. Let's hit, let's try it. Got the basic shape going. I think it's now time to move over to the heavy grid on my 2x72 and see if I can go ahead and keep working this down call to make the big reduction. I'll start with my 36, start moving as much as I can between 36 and 40, get down quickly where I need to be, and then I can always back off and get something a little bit lighter weight, and then it's time to start slowly working it so I don't burn it. <laughs> Now that you're seeing sparks, obviously I'm touching my metal. So what I want to do so I don't mess this up is I'm going to go ahead and wrap it in good old duct tape. And it'll give us protection so I don't keep scarring up this metal. So far I've done no damage. I want to make sure I keep it that way. Got it all wrapped up, protected this way. I haven't been too worried about the edge part as far as me handling with no gloves on. I have, I have not put an edge on.
see me use this every now and then. What this is, is the belt saver. It's actually very handy. I've used it for a while now. It's just a big eraser, basically. And uh, it helps unclog your belt from the debris. Metal, I'm not so much a fan of, but when working with wood, or in this case, leather, it definitely strips it out. As you can see, the belt becoming almost like new every time I use it. So I give it a shot. They work really well. Get some extra miles out of your belt. This has taken a while. I keep dipping it in water for two reasons. One, I don't want to get overheated and melt all my epoxy. But two, when you wet leather, it also gets hard and stiff. So it also helps with the sanding as well. I'm making some progress. The handle's coming. The gentleman who has this is a big gentleman, so I'm not probably I'm probably gonna keep it a little bit bigger than what it originally was. Um, still a whole lot more sanding to go, so I'll keep working at it and I'll be back. Folks, this is where I'm at right now. For the most part, it's done. I do want to do some cleanup on it. I've got a 400 wheel polishing wheel on my grinder. I'm going to bring the axe head a little bit, hatchet head to clean it up. And then I will put this on my polishing wheel to go ahead and finish it up and clean it up. Ergonomically, it feels pretty good in the hand. I think the rings come out nice multicolor the dark spots would be burnt from being a little aggressive and can be reduced by taking your time but for the ages of this hatchet it adds character Before, after. step almost done with it now what I want to do even though the handle looks beautiful as it is I want to make sure to preserve it I know it has the epoxy in there but I've got a fresh bar of beeswax I'm gonna use my blow torch and apply three good coats by heating up the leather heating up the beeswax hand rubbing it in I do have a glove that's basically saturated in beeswax I use for this application it works very well uh, blowtorch did heat up the leather which kind of gave it more of a darker look and I think this works out really well with the age of the hatchet and uh, ties it in really perfectly all right about three good coats of wax on there these wax this should give us some weather protection on that leather the gentleman gets it I know we'll take care of it he'll be using some good old leather soap on it, leather oil on it as he takes care of it and uh, I think once I get on the buffing wheel it will be good to go. So there's folks, start to finish, took me a while to work on. It's a project I definitely enjoy doing for a co-worker. As I mentioned, this belonged to his father and now he'll have it to have on for another generation. Profiling come along pretty well. 
handle to clean my shop up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and run this on the buffing wheel one more time to seal it. And this project will be called done.